Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So you'll often find the incorrigibly stupid morons of mainstream mathematics communities saying that this here cannot be evaluated when x is equal to 1. That's false, of course, by the way. And this is how we know it's false, because when we simplify this expression, this can only be equal to 1, okay? This can only be equal to 1. So, for example, you cannot have something like 0 over 0. In fact, you can't even have 0 over something. And I'll explain to you why in a moment, okay? 0 is not a number. Its main function is placeholder and disambiguator. You don't even need 0 in mathematics, but it makes communicating the... Uh, concept of number easier, okay? So otherwise you'd have to carry around a radix template with you. For example, you'd have units uh, like that, and then tens and hundreds. And so for example, if you, tens and hundreds and thousands. So if you wanted to say, let's say 11, you would just write 11 like that. If you wanted to say, um, uh, let's say 101, you would write it, you wouldn't have to put the zero, you would just write one, one, but you're not carrying a template around with you. So that's why when you don't have a template, you write 101 to disambiguate between different numbers, but zero is not needed, okay, at all, by the way. However, it's extremely useful, even though it's not a number. Now, um, why can't you say zero over k? Any guesses? Well, because look, when you write p over q, this here is a measure of a ratio, some ratio, where, where the ratio has a common divisor that measures the consequent and the antecedent. And p means the count of this divisor in the antecedent, and q the count of... Uh, the divisor in the consequent, okay? So you cannot have, you cannot have a ratio with no antecedent or one with no consequent, okay? Uh, uh, let's say K and K, or one with no consequent or antecedent. It's not possible to have such a ratio. And by the way, a ratio shows proportion. It doesn't show number, it shows proportion. Number shows measure from a ratio, okay? Stop the uh, video and think about that. Number shows measure from a ratio, okay? But a ratio is not a number. So now to learn more about that, you need to buy my famous book called The Ultimate Book of Numbers. <clears throat> I'll show you where it is. Just okay, you can get it for $9.99. As a, as a Kindle copy, or you can pay $150 for a hardcover copy, okay? And this is the best book ever written on numbers. It will give you everything you need to know about numbers, all right? So it will make you smarter than the smartest math professor that you think you have, okay? So coming back to my little demonstration here. So Zero is the cause of most of the algebraic problems that you encounter. So you've been wondering about this big black box down here. Okay. And of course, if you write something like zero is equal to zero, it's not even a true equation. Okay. It's not an equation because there's nothing on either side. Because the, when you write equals, what you have on this side and on this side must be numbers. Okay. These must be numbers. So you can't have 0 equals 0 because 0 is not a number. So if you write 20 minus 20 is equal to 25 minus 25, like that, and then you do this factorization, then you try to divide by this factor, you can't because this is not a number, see? All right? So most of the problems that you'll find in algebra are related to 0 not being a number, okay? And so another thing that you'll learn about uh, numbers and measure is that division 
plays a central role in everything, by the way, the operational division. And you can learn more about that in this fantastic book here called The Importance of Learning the Right Way, What Does Division Mean in Mathematics and How Does It Affect All Other Arithmetic Concepts. And in this book, I show you a lot of things that you've never seen in your life before. For example, how to do arithmetic without numbers, how, how arithmetic was discovered by the Greeks and then passed down rote. So what does that mean? That means that after the Greeks came along, the morons of mainstream math academia had no clue why if you have P over Q times R over S, it's equal to PR over QS. They had no clue about that. Similarly, they had no clue that if you divide it, then it will be PS over QR. Okay. They just followed all those things rotely. They didn't even understand why if you had P over Q plus or minus R over S that you take out a common factor. Okay. That's all geometric. Arithmetic, especially the four operations of arithmetic, come to you from geometry. They are not defined by some whimsical moron like your professor or math teacher. <laughs> I mean, these things work in geometry. That's why they work in algebra. Well, they work most of the time in algebra. But algebra has a little caveat in it. In other words, uh, it's not as precise as geometry. It uses what's called an abstract unit. Remember I showed you just a minute ago that if you have a ratio, the abstract unit doesn't care about the size of the divisor or the type even. Okay, you could have areas. Okay. The abstract unit doesn't care about the type or size. All you're doing is you're counting the number of divisors. And that's what it means when you use the abstract unit in algebra. Okay, and all these things, again, are explained to you in both my ultimate book of numbers and also learning the correct way. I'll place links to both these two books in the details section, okay? This book and also the ultimate book of numbers. So um, just one final thing. There is no way you should fall for the garbage that they tell you in calculus that you need limits to evaluate this. You don't. Okay. You do not need limits to evaluate that. It is defined that x is equal to 1, okay? And it, in fact, its, its value is equal to 2. Uh, same thing with sine x over x. It's also defined when x is no number, okay? It's defined when x is no number. So um, a lot of the things in mainstream mathematics are wrong, especially the theory. The results tend to be more or less correct, but the, the theory is entirely wrong. And that's why you have a crisis in calculus education, in math education, and so many people thinking they can't do math. If you're not already subscribed and become one, click like, follow me on academia.edu, um, tell your friends about this, and I'll be speaking with you soon, hopefully sometime in the near future.